Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be showing you how to paint a miniature for one of my absolute favourite games, and that is a Dothraki veteran for a Song of Ice and Fire the Miniatures game by Simon. Now the reason why we've chosen this miniature is because it is firstly a fantastic model. It's really detailed, it's got a fantastic pose, but also by following what we're going to show you in this video, you'll also have all the information you need to not only paint the veterans, but also Dothraki Screamers and Dothraki Outriders as well. So this guide will guide you through painting all the core warriors in the Targaryen starter set. We really hope you enjoy this video and we'll see you at the desk. To paint your Dothraki veterans, the first thing that you need to do is to undercoat the models with a neutral mid-tone. And so I've gone for Xandri Dust from Citadel, which is a perfect choice for this colour scheme. Though a medium grey will be just as good, for example uniform grey from the Army Painter. Whatever you choose, we are going to be painting all over it, so the colour isn't particularly important, just as long as the base coats that we apply to it cover nicely. And in fact the first base coat that we're going to be applying to the miniature is the biggest one, which is of course for the horse. Now for this one we're going to paint it as a dark base, so for this what we need is a darker brown, and the one I've picked out is chocolate brown from Vallejo. And to apply it what you need to do is to go for a larger brush, I've actually got a large dry brush here from the Army Painter because it's going to cover a lot of area very quickly, it's perfect for what we need just here. And you can see I've already got a dollop of my paint on my palette, and I'm using a wet palette here, though you don't have to, a regular palette will be fine. And all you need to do is, as ever, just get a touch of water on your brush, mix it into the paint like that, just to make sure it's nice and smooth so that you're not going to clog any detail. And once you've got it thinned down and loaded up on your brush like this, all you've got to do is start applying it to the horse. Now for this first stage, don't worry about any of the details, just make sure you cover the horse entirely. Just make sure you cover the whole coat like this, including the mane and the tail, and be sure to apply this as two thin coats to ensure a nice smooth finish before you move on to the next step. And with that horse base coated in the dark brown, we can now move on to base coating some of the smaller details on the Dothraki himself. Now something that we need to note about these miniatures when you're painting Dothraki is that a lot of the model is dominated by a horse and a very dark colour and skin and lots of leather. Now the overall impression of the miniature then can be that it's quite a sort of drab brown colour, and this can look a little bit dull on the battlefield. So what I recommend you do when you're painting your miniatures is look for opportunities to introduce the House Targaryen colours on them, so in a subtle way. So what we're looking for here is reds and blacks primarily, but with some sort of like khaki off-whites as well. These work really nicely in these miniatures. And the saddle cloth and the kilt are perfect places to do this kind of thing. Now first of all what we're going to do is base coat the saddle cloth, and on this later on we're going to paint a red and black pattern, but this is going to go over the top of kind of like an off-white colour, so a shabty bone from Citadel is the one I picked out to do this for. But what I recommend you do is just vary it from model to model to get some nice variety on them. But to apply this what you need to do is to pick a larger brush. I've gone for a regiment brush here from the Army Painter, which is a really nice brush for base coating details like this. Now as ever we just need to get some onto the palette just there, and thin down with a touch of water. There we go, just to check to make sure it's nice and smooth so again we don't lose any detail, and also so we can keep control of the paint as well. So there we go, get it thin down load of the brush, and then it's just a matter of blocking this detail in. Now because some of that brown from the horse has got on there, I am going to need to apply two thin coats on here, but all you do is just start blocking in this detail like this, just working your way up to the rider and going underneath the legs, just there like that. And there you are, you can see that a shabty bone really helps separate the rider from the horse, and also it's forming a great starting point for that pattern we're going to paint on later on in red and black. But now we're going to move on to painting the kilt on the miniature, which is another one of those great opportunities to add a flash of colour to it. And for this one, we're going to go for the appropriately named Dragon Red from the Army Painter. Although it's a good idea once again to vary the colour from model to model here, just to really mix things up a little bit. So to apply this, again, I'm going to use that regiment brush, and you can see I've got a little dollop there on the palette already. And as ever, just get that touch of water. There we go, mixed in there like that, load up your brush, and then it's just a matter of blocking this detail in. So the part we're looking at here is this fabric going around the waist and trailing out the back just here. So I just want to make sure I block in all of this, only being careful when I get close to the horse or that saddle cloth. And with that red now applied, you can see we have another lovely flash of colour on the miniature. And for that detail, again, just feel free to vary it as much as you like. Perhaps with some different tones of reds and blacks are really good. Khakis are great as well. Whatever you choose, though, with that done, we can now move on to base coating some of the remaining smaller details on the miniature. Now, for this, first of all, what we need to do is to base coat all the leather details, for which Rhinox Hide is a great colour. After that, we're going to use some Steel Legion Drab, and this is going to be for the soft leather boots. 
With that done, we can then move on to Corvus Black for a few details that are going to be in an off-black color. And then after that, what we need to do is to use some metal. So Iron Hand Steel is perfect for the armor and the arrow. But first of all, what we need is that Rhinox Hide. And again, to apply it, I'm using the Regiment Brush. And you can see this color's a nice different tone of dark brown from what we had for the horse. So it's going to keep the two nicely separate. And as always, let's get that touch of water. Just mix in with the paint like that to make sure it's nice and smooth and under control. And then we're ready to start base coating all those leather details. And what we're looking for primarily is straps. So for example, on the front of the chest just there, there's one that runs along that goes under the hair. Don't worry about catching the hair for the time being. Just make sure you get all that leather along there like that. But also we're looking for details such as the quiver for the arrows. So all of this detail around about here. And also the bits of leather that are on the back of the gauntlets, which you can see are just around here. Next, we're ready to add some Steel Legion Drab to the miniature. And this, first of all, is for the boots, for which we need to paint the entire area, including up here and all the way down to the feet. But in addition, we're looking for some wooden details too, which in the case of this model is going to involve the whole of the bow. So all of this detail here, including all the bindings and also any half of the arrows that you can see. Next, we're ready to add some Corvus Black to the miniature. And this is mostly for the Dothraki's hair. So all the way around here, and of course the beard as well. But in addition, if the miniature has any arrows, be sure to pick out the fletchings on them as well. And finally, we're ready to paint in all the metal details using some iron hand steel, once again with that regiment brush. Now for the armor, you could paint it as like a hardened leather. And if you want to do that, just paint it in another shade of dark brown. But I think it looks nice to have a nice flash of metal on the miniatures around these details too. So we need to do the armor on the shoulders and also on the van braces too, which you can see is kind of poking out just beneath these leather patches that go on the back of them. So just along there, very carefully painted in. Notice I'm just keeping the model nice and steady keep my hands together so that they're not shaking, just so I can do that. Now, in addition, we need to paint the arrack as well. So at this stage, be sure to base coat the entirety of this sword too. And there we go, all the metal details have been base coated in as well. And with all those base coats now applied, we can move on to the next phase of painting the miniature, which is to wash it with the first wash for this model. Now for this, the ideal color to use is a dark brown one. So I'm going to use some Agrax Urshade from Citadel. They could use Strong Tone from the Army Painter if you want to. Either way, what this color is going to do is to really give some definition to the miniature. And what we've done actually is base coat only colors that are going to be using this wash. So it's a very quick and convenient way of painting a model like this. Now to apply it, what you need to do is to get hold of a really large brush. And I have a monster brush from the Eye Painter just here that I keep around just for this purpose. And with this, what I'm gonna do is get a good amount onto a regular palette now. This is just a tile. I've switched this because these paints really don't quite behave right in a wet palette. So having a regular palette like this is really useful for it. Now, the reason why I like to use a palette for this is because it allows me to control exactly how much this wash I'm applying to the miniature at once. If you're a little bit braver, you can go straight from the pot if you prefer, but this gives, just gives a little bit more control for your figure. And also with this, we are gonna be applying two coats. So for the second coat, especially, it is important to use a palette as you'll see. But what we need to do is load up a good amount onto the brush. And then with this, all you do is just start painting it all over the miniature, covering every detail on there. So you see what happens is it runs into those recesses and gives some really nice definition and shading on the model. And well, makes it look really nice. Now, whilst you're doing this, bear in mind when, when you're applying a large amount like this, it's quite possible some will splatter off the model. So be sure to protect your work surface if you haven't already with some newspaper or a cutting mat or something like that. But when you apply large amounts, it's quite possible that what you'll get happening is, for example, on this foot, things like that will start to happen. As more of this paint runs towards the bottom of the model, you'll start to get really large amounts collecting on the foot there like that. And this will happen on the horse's legs too, and cap around its mouth and areas like that. If you spot that happening, it's important that you move that away before it dries because that will look really horrible if it dries like that. To move it away, all you do is just use a brush a bit like a sponge. So you just touch it to it, and it just absorbs the excess away. Just redistribute it elsewhere around the miniature like that. So all you need to do now is apply this all over the figure and then give it plenty of time to dry. When using this quantity of wash, it'll take around about 45 minutes before you move on to the next step. Once our wash is completely dry, we can then move on to a second coat of Agrax Earth Shade, this time focused a little bit more, so you can see I'm using my regiment brush to apply it. And first of all, I'm going to apply it to the boots on the lower part down here. If there's a turn back, leave that a little bit lighter to distinguish the two areas of detail. 
But in addition, if your miniature has a bow on this, what we need to do is to make the wood of it a little bit darker. So you can see how there's kind of a binding running all the way up it. What we want to do is just run some of this wash in between those bindings like that to make the bow wood a little bit darker than the straps. And with that second coat of wash now completely dry, we've actually finished one of the main parts of painting the miniature, but we're now ready to move on to the next main part, which is to paint in the skin, which is of course one of the big features of these miniatures. Now the reason why we've kept this separate from everything else is because we're going to use a different wash on it, one that's going to be a lot warmer and give more life to the skin. But to do this, first of all, we need to base coat that skin, and a perfect colour for this is Bugman's Glow from Citadel. Now to apply it, I've gone back to my regiment brush, but it's worth noting that some of the details in these miniatures, depending on which one you're doing, it can be quite tricky to get to them. So feel free to switch to a smaller brush should you need it. Something like a detailed brush from the Army Painter is perfect, particularly around the face when you're painting things like uh, around the, the beard and things like that. But whatever the case, what you need to do is just get that paint ready as always, thinning it down with that touch of water so it's flowing really smoothly from your brush. And once you've done so, it's just a matter of blocking all the flesh in. So for example, if I start on the leg just here, all I'm going to do is just start painting it in like this, being neat when I get close to those details that I've done so far. So for example, just working underneath that armour just there like that. And when it comes to the face, you can see what I mean, how it can become quite intricate. When you're doing this, just really take your time working around these details such as the beard, the moustache, all areas like that. And there we are, all the flesh is now base coated and I've really taken my time on it, particularly getting around the awkward details like his left hand that's gripping the mane there. But with that done, we can now move on to the next step, which is to apply that warmer wash to it. And for this one, what I'm going to use is some Reichlin Flesh Shade from Citadel. Now to apply it, I'm going back to the regiment brush because we want to be very controlled about it. We only want to get it onto the skin. So it's important that you use that regular palette once more just to help make sure that your brush isn't overloaded. So just get some there already. Maybe some tissue to get rid of the excess and load up from there. There we go. And with this done, what we need to do is start applying it all over that skin. So areas such as the leg just there, just apply it all over like this so it runs into that recessed detail. That wash is now completely dry and we can move on to the next step, which is to start to brighten that skin up and start to define the detail on it. And for this, the first thing that we need to do is to apply a layer onto the skin using some tanned flesh from the Army Painter. Now to apply it, what you need is a brush that holds a fine tip. So any sort of size will do, but as long as it's got that fine tip, you'll be able to get the control that you need for those details. So I'm using my regiment brush once more, and you can see I've got a little bit of tan flesh already here on my palette. It's just a matter of adding that touch of water to it as ever. Just make sure it's nice and smooth, and then make sure your brush is nicely loaded up. There we go. And with this, what we need to do is to start apply thin coats of this onto the flat areas of the muscle. So for example, if we take a look at the chest just here, what I'm going to do is start applying to this flat area on this pectoral just there like that. And then when I get to the recess as we go down to these muscles down here, you just skip past it, leaving it darker, and apply it to this area down here like this. And it's really just a matter of repeating this method across the entirety of the skin. Always looking for those recesses where more of that shade settled in it, and just avoid those areas. And that includes on the face, where again we're just going to start painting on these flat parts, like the nose just there, and on the forehead. But then when it gets to areas such as the eyes, just leave that a little bit darker, and apply a bit more of this colour on the cheekbones. With that layer applied, you can now see that lots of the detail on the skin is really starting to stand out. However, when we washed it earlier on, it did darken down quite a lot. And some of that dark shading is still shown through in some areas, which kind of emphasizes the muscles a little bit more than they should do, giving a slightly comical appearance to things. So what we're going to do is just apply a little bit of Bugman's Glow to these areas to take the edge off and just make the muscles look a little bit less pronounced than those parts. So to do it, what you need to do is go for a really small brush now. I've got a detail brush here from the Army Painter. Let's get a small amount of Bugman's Glow, but this time thin it down more than we did in the previous time that we used it. So a bit more water, so it's quite runny there like that. You see, I'm just testing it on the palette. You can see it's quite translucent. That's the kind of tone that we want. And with this, all you've got to do is just start running it into some of those recesses that are a little bit too dark. So for example, on the leg, you can see these ones that we've got on the muscles just there. They're great examples of this. All you've got to do is just run this colour over those areas like that, just to tone it down and take the edge off that recess. And there we go, with that shading applied, you can see we've now got a smoother finish on some of those more shallow muscles, and with that done, we can move on to highlighting all the skin. And for this, we need two colours first of all. We're going to begin with some Barbarian Flesh, followed by some Cobalt Flesh for a finer highlight, and then we're going to go on to a little bit of Corvus Black, and this is going to be for the hair for some parts that have been shaved. 
But first of all, we need that Barbarian Flesh from the Army Painter, and I've got my little dollop of it just here on the palette. I'm going to be applying this using a Detail Brush, also from the Army Painter. And with this, what we want to do is to make a very thin version of it on the palette. So add those touches of water to it to really bring it down. Notice I'm putting the water in next to the paint, not actually in it. Just putting it next to it and drawing some of the pigment in to control how thick the paint's going to be. When I kind of get it so it's like that, you see it's quite runny, it's quite translucent, but the idea here is that as I apply it, it's going to go on very thinly and some of the colour beneath is going to show through. So that's the perfect kind of status that we want the paint to be at. So what you do is just get a small amount loaded on your brush, just making sure it's not overloaded using the tissue there. And with this, what we need to do is just look at one muscle at a time and apply it towards the top with a light wood catch. So for example, if we look at the body on here with all these muscles around there, what I'd do on this one is start by applying it towards the top of this one like that, just drawing it down a little bit and then stopping about there. Same on this one, so again just very lightly apply to that area like that. Then for this muscle, again at the top of that one there, same on that one there like that. And what this is doing is exaggerating the shape of it by giving the impression of more light hitting these areas, just helping them stand out a little bit more. And you really just continue this across all the muscles. So again on the leg we're looking at those top areas where the light's going to be hitting, so that's going to kind of go down that side there like that. A little bit on the kneecap, so just going around there. This on the back just there like that, and you see it's just a matter of just steadily building this up to get those nice highlights. Now on the face there's a little bit more to do. For this, rather than just looking to thinly paint it on, we need to kind of emphasise the details of his face just there. So with this what I'm going to do is start out by painting a bit of this down the centre of his nose, so just there like that. A bit on the brow, so on this side that's going to be just across there like that. A bit on the cheekbone as well, there we go, and as you can see this just helps the details of the face stand out a little bit more. And finally we just need a small amount of cobalt skin just to really finish off the features on the flesh. And for this what we're looking for is the sharpest details. So for example on the face once more, I'm just looking at applying a small amount of this colour onto the end of the nose just there. Once again onto the brow, so very gently across there like that, and a bit on the cheek there. And you can see this is quite a light colour, so this is why we've got to use it so selectively, just to help those details stand out. On the rest of the muscles, again we're looking for the hearts that really jump out at you, so areas such as the top of the kneecap for example, just along there, on some of the muscles here where it's catching the light, all details like this. And then finally we can return to Corvus Black to apply it onto the head where the shaved hair is. Now this has been thinned right down just like we did with Barbarian Flesh earlier on, and all you got to do is apply a thin coat of this following the pattern as to where the hair would be, so just down there going towards the back and a little bit down here for the sideburns. And there we are, with that done we've now finished painting all of the flesh and we can move on to the next step of painting the miniature which is to do some layering to brighten some details up, and we can also start painting the pattern on the saddlecloth too. Now the first stage for doing this is to return to that kilt back with the mid-tone that we originally painted on it, so back to Dragon Red, and this time I'm going to be applying it with the regiment brush again, only in a little bit more selective a manner. So I've still got some of the paint here on my palette, just like before, just get a touch of water mixed in there to thin it down. And this time when applying it what we're looking to do is to avoid those recesses where the shade dried earlier on. So those raised areas that are a little bit lighter we want to apply it to those. So for example the part we can see around here, what I'm going to do is to paint on this flat area here but not go right into those creases such as where it folds back there and that crease, that little recess just there, skip past it and start reapplying this onto the other side. And this way we get a neat finish, brightens it up too and we still retain the definition from the shading. And with that kilt now layered we can move on to the next step which is to do some layering on the saddle cloth and also to paint in a pattern on it as well. Now for this what we need to do first of all is return to a shabty bone, so again re-establishing that mid-tone that we used, but then for the pattern we're going to go for quite a simple pattern using some black and some red. So for this we need some Corvus black followed by Evilson Scarlet, and then to highlight the saddle cloth what we need is Screaming Skull. But first of all we need a shabty bone, and I'm again using my regiment brush to apply this, and with this we can go back to some of that paint I used earlier on, there we are, it's still wet so I can use that, and it's just a matter of getting some of this nice and thin, there we go. And then to apply it, what we're going to do, just like with that kilt, is reapply it over the saddle cloth but looking to avoid any recesses where more shade is settled. So this part of the back for example, what I can do is start applying it like this, but where there's little slashes and little breaks in it are, just avoid those areas, and just paint around them like that to get a nice neat smooth finish on it whilst retaining all of that shading there like that. Now in addition at this stage keep an eye out for any bones on the miniature, and there are a few on the bow just here, you can see we've got these kind of like horns coming out, just be sure to paint those in at this stage as well, and there are also a few on the back of the van bracers, which are these kind of little sort of hook horns we've got just here, be sure to pick those out as well. 
With that layering done, the next step is to start to apply a pattern onto the saddle cloth. And with this, I've got Corvus Black, first of all, and using this, what I'm gonna do is paint two stripes running across it. So starting around about here, start painting in a guideline like this in this vertical motion, and I'm painting in a downwards motion, so sort of downwards towards myself, looking down the brush, which makes it nice and easy to control whereabouts it's going. And from that starting point, I can slowly start to widen out the line. Now, the intent of this is to give the impression that this fabric is actually some quite rich fabric from some culture that they've raided and have then gone and used it as a saddle cloth on their mounts. But you don't have to do this if you don't want to, it just adds a nice bit of character to these miniatures. Once you're happy with the black, you're then ready to move on to adding some red to the pattern. So using some Evil Sun Scarlet, what I'm going to do is to paint a thinner red line in the middle of each of these black areas. So once again, just doing that vertical motion, just slowly building it up, going back to Corvus Black, if any mistakes are made to neaten it back up again. Now by doing this, you can see what I'm doing is subtly introducing the Targaryen colors onto the miniature, which overall will help tie the army together. And finally, we can highlight the saddle cloth with some Screaming Skull. And with this, what we want to do is to highlight around the entire area of detail. So just working all the way around. And notice I'm not using the tip of my brush, I'm actually using the side of it. And I'm just allowing that edge on the detail to catch the brush, to give a nice neat line going all the way around. Don't worry about the patterns though, just go all the way around those as well to highlight the whole area of detail as one single piece. And with that highlight applied, the saddle cloth is complete and we've even got a nice pattern on it going all the way around as well. And with that done, we can now move on to highlighting the smaller details in the miniature. And first of all, we need to finish that kilt. Now for this, we're gonna to return to Evilson Scarlet, again applied using that detail brush. And to highlight this, we need to do the same thing as what we did on that saddle cloth. We're just looking to get a small amount of this paint and follow it all the way around, but also pick out any creases that really stand out too. So just make sure that paint's ready. And then what we need to do is start looking for those features. And for example, if we take a look at it round here, you can see there's a lot of texture. All I'm looking to do is to run the brush just along those edges, such as along there like that, actually using the side of the brush more than the tip. Just kind of working my way around, just hold the model as feels comfortable to be able to access those areas like that. And then when it comes to these creases down the middle here, all you've got to do, is just angle the model so you're painting in a kind of downward sweeping motion towards yourself and just look for the top of that crease and just gently follow it all the way down there like that. And with that, the kilt is complete, and now we can move on to highlighting the remaining details on the rider. And with this, first of all, what we need is some Gorthor Brown to highlight the dark leather, and then we're gonna move on to some Bane Blade Brown to highlight that lighter leather. After this, we'll need Mechanica Standard Grey to finish off all the hair, and then some Screaming Skull to finish off the bone details. Finally, we need some Stormhost Silver, and this is going to be to highlight all of that metal. But first of all, what we need is some Gorthor Brown. And again, using the detail brush with this color, what we need to do is to pick out all those sharp edges on the leather details, all the really dark ones that we did with Rhinox Hide earlier on. So once you've got that paint ready, it's just a matter of looking for those details and picking them out. So for example, on the back of the Van Bracers, these little leather patches we've got, once again, just like we were doing before, just look for those edges and just gently pick them out using the side of your brush, just going along here like this. With that done, we can now move on to highlighting all the lighter leather using some Bane Blade Brown. And this is primarily going to be the boots. Again, just looking for those edges and just very gently using the side of your brush, just run your way along them like that. Always turning the model so it's comfortable to access those details so you can get that nice, neat highlight. But in addition, if the model's got a bow, there's those straps on them. And at this stage, we want to make sure that we pick those out as well. We're now ready to move on to Mechanica Standard Grey to highlight the black hair. And for this, we need just to paint some lines following along the direction of the hair like this, just using the brush just to pick out the texture of the strands like this. Now, in addition, if the miniature has a bow and arrow, at this stage, be sure to pick out the fletchings on the arrows as well. With the hair done, we're now ready to move on to Screaming Skull. And this is first of all used to finish off these bone details, such as these little horns on the back of the van braces. We just need a small amount of this color towards the end of each one there like that. And in addition, we can use this color to paint in the miniature's teeth at this stage too. And for this, you just got to really brace your hands as steady as possible. Just gently move the brush going alongside them like this and just gently pick them out. And then finally, using Stormhost Silver, we can finish off all the armor by once again, just highlighting along the edges of all the silver details. And this will be for both the armor and also the sword as well.
And with that, the rider is now complete and we can move on to finishing off that horse. And remember for this, what we're going to do is a dark bay. So to do this, we need to darken down some areas and bring them to a near black. Now, the easiest way to do this is to use some black Templar, which is one of Citadel's contrast paints. And there's a few stages to this. First of all, what we need to do is to block in some areas. So I'm using my regiment brush here from the Army Painter and I'm back to my regular palette and straight out the pot, I'm just getting some onto the palette just there. Now, this time I'm not going to thin it down with any water. Instead, this pure one from the pot, what I'm going to do is paint this initially over the mane and the tail. So just all over here, being careful when you get to the hand that's clutching the mane like that. But you see doing this immediately makes that a really, really dark color and almost black, so perfect for what we want. Now, in addition, we need to do this on the hooves as well. So on these little areas down here, just apply it that whole part there like that. And also just getting a small amount on the brush, just run some into the recess of the eye, just in there as well, to darken that down as well. Now, in addition to this, what we need to do is to darken down all the legs to make it into a dark bay. And to do that with your black Templar on the palette, just thin it down with a touch of water this time so it's not quite so strong. And then using this, what we need to do is to apply it to the legs. So apply it down to the bottom like that and just bring it up to just about the knees. And when you get to the knee, quickly wash your brush, just make sure it's damp and just quickly just flick the brush back and forth across the paint there just to bring it a little bit up over the knee. And this way you get a nice fade from the dark there to lighter just there. Once that contrast paint is dry, we can move on to the next step, which is to do some layering on the horse's body to re-establish its mid-tone and also provide some contrast between the lighter areas on the upper body and the darker areas on the legs and the mane and the tail. And to do this, what we need to do is return to that original color, which is chocolate brown from Baleo. Now to apply it, I'm still going to use that regiment brush and you can see I've got some just here. And like with the layering we were doing earlier on, same sort of technique where we just need to make sure it's nice and thin, nice and smooth like that. When applying it to the miniature, we're looking for the recessed details and basically looking to avoid them. So for example, on the head just up here, you can see these lines on the neck. You can see those recesses where more of that shade settled. So as I apply this, what I'm looking to do is to avoid those areas. So for example, painting onto that area just there, and you can see it dips in just underneath the neck there. So I'm going to avoid that and then reapply some of the paint just there like that. You see doing this is lightening up that body, but it's also keeping that definition from all of that shading from earlier on as well. Now, in addition at this stage, what we can do is use this color to highlight the darker areas. So for example, the mane just here, so using the side of your brush to skim along to catch some raised texture on these details like that to give a quick little highlight to this hair. And the same goes for the tail as well. When it comes to the legs, what we want to do is just do a little highlight following just along here, right above the hoof, a little bit just there on the ankle and on the knee as well. But for the layering, don't begin it until you get to around about here. With that layering and highlighting applied, we can now move on to highlighting all of the brown that's a bit further up on the body. And for this, what we'll need is some werewolf fur. Now this kind of horse also has white patches on it. And if you want to do these, what you're going to need is some rakar flesh followed by some pallid witch flesh. But first of all, we need that werewolf fur and I have it already here on my palette just there. And I'm going to be applying this using my detail brush from the Army Painter once more. And with this, we just got to get a small amount ready. There we go. And using this, it's just a matter of picking out all the most defined features on the horse. So for example, if we look at the front of its body just here, you can see all the shape of the muscles. All I'm going to do is apply a bit of this color just towards the top of them like this, just where they would catch the light. Once that highlight's applied, you're then ready to decide if you want to put any white markings on the horse. And this can go on the legs or on its head. And there's all sorts of different shapes for this. But for this one, I'm going to go for a kind of diamond-like pattern up here on the forehead. And to do this with Rakar flesh, all you do is just start applying it kind of like this in a sort of slightly rough motion, working out from a central point like that to start building up the kind of pattern that you want. And in a rough application like this, it just gives the impression of the hair fading into the darker brown hair around it. Once you're happy with the basic outline for the pattern, the next thing to do is to move on to Pallid Witch Flesh and repeat this process across the top of it, only slightly more towards the middle, so that a little bit of Rakarth Flesh still shows around the outside. In addition, at this stage, we can paint in the horse's eye, and because it's already black, all we need to do is just do a tiny dot of white at the back of it, so just there. And with that, the horse's body is complete and so are its eyes. And in fact, we can now move on to the final detail of the miniature, which is optional, is to add some war paint to the model. Now for this, the actual color of the war paint determines what Kalasar your Dothraki is riding in. And in the case of Karl Drogo's, what you want is a rich royal blue. So what we've done is gonna start out with some Kalador sky, and then we're going to apply some Thunderhawk blue over the top of it to give it a little bit more depth. 
But first of all, we need that Calador sky and to apply it, I'm going back to my detail brush. And with these kind of markings, what I recommend you do is have a good look at some of the cards that come inside the Targaryen starter box, because you'll see these markings appearing on the model as well, on the artwork. And this can give you great inspiration for your models too. And they tend to appear in kind of slash markings. So kind of like claws, tends to be in threes. So that's what we're gonna do on this miniature. And the areas to look for doing this on the horse, kind of on the front of its body there and on the back of the hindquarters just there. So to do this, what you do is just start out with some guidelines. So I'm gonna start here, kind of going in a slightly crescent shape, kind of along there like that, just as a guiding point to start out from there. Then what I'm gonna do on either side of this is do a similar marking, this one starting a bit higher up, going down like that, and then the one just a bit further towards the back, a little bit shorter, there like that. And you can see what I mean by the kind of slash, like a claw mark, as if some claws scoured the back of it. Once you're happy with that initial marking, all you need to do is to widen the pattern out a little bit towards one end, so towards the top, just making it a little bit thicker, and then closing it off there at the very top like that, and just repeating that for all three. And this way you'll have the marking start to be painted in. So then it's just a matter of doing as many of these on the model as you like. And it looks quite nice if you repeat the pattern on the opposite side. It doesn't have to be perfect because the rider would have painted this on himself. So it doesn't have to be, you know, like exact, but as long as it's roughly the same, it'll look just right. Once you're happy with those markings, the next thing to do is to apply some Thunderhawk blue over the top of them, towards the middle of them, just to make them a little bit stronger in color in the center there like this. And once you've done this, your miniature is then ready to be based. And as ever, it's entirely up to you how you base it, but for me, I'm going to go for a grasslands base to represent the Dothraki Sea. And with the base now fully painted, this Dothraki veteran is complete and ready to take to the battlefield. So as you see in this video, there's two really important things to take away from it. And that is, first of all, look for opportunities to put in the House Targaryen colors into this miniature, because this is very easy then to replicate across the army and bring a sense of unity to all the various forces under the House Targaryen banner. So that is red and black on details like the saddlecloth. The second thing is perhaps a little bit more important, and this is the skin, because the skin is really the part of these miniatures that jumps out. So if you're gonna take your time anywhere in these models, it's when you're highlighting the flesh. Anyway, those are the most important things to remember, and we really hope you enjoy painting your Dothraki. We'll see you all again very soon.